Alright, I'm checking in with you. We're uh, doing a little yak shaving today. For those of you that don't know, uh, yak shaving is when you have one project to do, but you notice something else along the way, so you start on that. And then when you're doing that project, you find something else to do. So, we shaved a few yaks earlier, but then we actually got to this pop-up project, which is the uh, door for our uh, carriage house. We got the we ordered the, the French door so we could swing it open and uh, roll a dolly through there, which has worked out great. And the uh, doors, we really like them. They've got the little shade inside the two panes of glass so it doesn't get dusty and we can open that up for more light when it's still cold outside. So we like the style, the design of the doors, but what uh, we're not too impressed with was this uh, wood. It's down the side and we had a problem with its... Um, it's not the highest quality wood we found out plus it was laminated and then it was put together with uh, we don't know maybe some frog spit or something but it was not um, suitable for a, a wet environment and this is meant to be an exterior door so we talked to the folks at the place that sold it to us uh, their brand and uh, they said well you, you're supposed to paint it well I, we've been around a little bit of wood a little bit of water and we think that even if you paint it, you should have uh, marine grade uh, glue or waterproof glue on it. So anyway, lesson learned. Check if you're going to buy a door like this, check and see what the core is made out of. This has got laminated wood with not waterproof glue and some foam. So what we had to do was uh, cut a chunk out, used our oscillating tool, and had a nice little piece of teak laying in, and we just uh, cut a new piece for it. Uh, put some... Uh, Total boat thick so in there, thickened epoxy. Put a lot of that in there, clamped it all together with uh, all the clamps we have, and it's it's uh, drying up now. When it's done, we'll trim it, sand a little bit as we need it, and get it back on there. We like to name our clamps. So you notice some of the names on them with the family members and uh, friends. So everybody got put to work today, and uh, a special shout out to. Captain Jack, who crossed the bar just a couple of weeks back, not quite a couple of weeks ago, is uh, still hard at work, though, helping out with the uh, uh, carriage house and our garage and other uh, boathouse projects. And uh, the clamp next to it, Mr. Hazelwood, family friend that together, uh, Jack and Hazelwood taught each other a lot of things, did some fine sailing together, and they passed all those tips and tactics and tricks along to... Uh, skipper and she in turn has passed them along to me so we still think fondly of them every day and uh, when we're out working on our various projects and uh, that's what you see when you're reading our blog or looking at our Facebook page or some of their uh, witticisms that we <laughs> that we see are out there that they've uh, passed along the um, so while we had the thinking epoxy out the next project up on the Alcourt Sunfish chip was getting uh, getting everything prepped for the bottom to go on so we put a few days ago we put some primer this is the cockpit area in here so that we'll be able to get into it or so we won't have to get into it once the uh, bottom goes on and we'll probably put the at least the first coat of paint on here before the bottom goes on a nice coat of white see uh, how we like that but one of the things that happened, uh, one of the mistakes I made when I was cutting the old bottom off was uh, using a reciprocating saw to trim through all these all these little nails here and, and the old adhesive was I didn't compensate for the angle of the, uh, of the frame there. So I sawed through a couple of the frames. I didn't get all of them, but I got these kind of uh, important here on the cockpit. You don't want water flowing through there back into the rest of the interior of the hole so took that thing thickened epoxy while it was out and uh, squeezed it into the uh, into the cut from both sides and then smoothed it down on the outside smoothed it down a little bit on the inside not too worried about the inside of it if someone's in there looking at it oh let's see this 1963 boat uh, 50, someone's in there looking at it 56 years ago then go hey hmm 
wonder what happened here. The uh, thick saw we mentioned is a uh, it's epoxy resin and hardener. Comes in a tube. There's two parts to the tube, so when you squeeze it out, it mixes together in a mixing tube, and it's also pretty thickened. And by thickened, I mean you can squirt it onto a vertical surface like that, and it doesn't run out like the uh, thinner, unthickened epoxy was. We'll swing up here and swing you over to where the tube is that I'm talking about. This little mixer tube. It's got these little channels and the uh, two holes. The epoxy goes in there. Two holes comes out one hole on the end. So that's what um, how that works. So we uh, fixed my mistake and uh, for those of you that wonder about boat building uh, Captain Pete Culler said that boat building is simply about correcting one mistake after another with the first mistake having been to begun in the first place so we kind of like that but uh, so we're on here uh, working on this sunfish today uh, fixing a few things up and getting a few more things one of the things we do when we have the bottom off is we run a bead of epoxy around the inside between the deck and the, uh, the side. And when we put the bottom on, we make sure we've got a nice, probably a double bead here. Double bead here plus uh, double beads on the inside of the, uh, of the hull panels. So that if over the years any adhesive has uh, dried up any little little voids have appeared. Maybe we can fill those up. We'll also do the same thing on the outside. We'll do an air leak test. If we find the air leaks, like along this seam, we'll uh, take it and uh, ease it out a little bit with a little flush blade on a reciprocating saw and then inject thickened epoxy into that also and let it uh, seal up. But hopefully at a minimum from the uh, 1963 adhesive and the 2019 adhesive around the inside that will take care of most of the issue and by the 1963 I think they used a um, I'm sure someone will come on and tell me exactly which one it was weld wood a powdered mix glue or resource and all one of them that comes up and makes this uh, black seam here and that stuff uh, held up uh, pretty good I think it would use World War II or just thereafter and it's uh, we found it's held up well on these boats so it's still out there in some areas it, uh, it's a good boat building material but um, since I'm lazy I like buying the stuff Arnia tube uh, this uh, thickened epoxies and using those there's the uh, new panels waiting to go on we use the uh, old panels as the uh, templates to cut them out. Got to do a little trimming so that they'll sit nice and flush along this uh, centering strip. And then we'll be able to put the uh, epoxy down, drill some little pilot holes for uh, silicone bronze ring shaped nails and start nailing it down. Hope y'all are having a great day and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon.